It's the Jill of All Trades, Michelle C, a.k.a. DJ Make a Move. She cute. Your host of Candy Kids TV, everywhere you need to be. <laughs> and if you don't know by now, it's not your typical interview, y'all. Candy Kisses, blown away. Candy Kisses, TV for tomorrow today. Man, throw that all the on that bitch. That you sound like Teddy Payne. Hi there, this is Kim Cole, and you are rocking with Candy Kisses TV. It's your boy Talon, baby. Michelle and Candy Kisses TV. With my girl Michelle C. Don't take a cruise and no. Bruh, man, from the fifth floor in the ATL, chitty with Candy Kisses TV. What's up, y'all? You're watching Candy Kisses TV. We're my whole girl, Michelle. Hello there. Have you asked yourself what you're missing? I have. It's Candy Kisses TV. <laughs> Boy, there, there, man, Mr. Funny for real, man. Live from Candy Kisses TV and Michelle C. Let's get it. What up, what up, girls? Michelle C, aka DJ Make a Move, the Jill of all trades, and I am back with another dope talent. First and foremost, before we get into that, I'm gonna need y'all to do what I need y'all to do every time. I'm gonna need for you to like, comment, and subscribe. Act like your mama done taught you something. You did. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Now, I'm bringing you one of my homies from way back. Way back. <sighs> okay, this nigga stupid. stupid. <laughs> so, introducing, <laughs> introducing my homie, Daryl Dale. What's, What's going on, Michelle? Let's now, please, please tell them how to find you on social media and all that good stuff. Oh, man, Daryl Dam won on Instagram because they took it because I got into it with somebody and they... Clove my thirty three thousand out. Yeah, they shut me what, down. What you do? Oh, uh, it, it was a, a you know uh -huh. a female comedian talking. You know, and I was in one of those movies Doing what where you I do? felt like talking. About, <laughs> you know. So you think she she threw shade on you and it was like, no, oh, definitely, definitely, okay. yeah, okay. yeah, man. You know, because you know I've been doing, I, I've been, you know, I've been posting some interesting topics to say the least. That you have, that you have. We're we gonna talk about it a little bit because mm -hmm. I ain't gonna get all into that. But. Right. Let's go ahead and get in mm. to the real deal. Now, you've been in this game for 21 years. 20, 20. I've been 20. Well, yeah, almost 21. Well, 2022 will make 21. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so it. what keeps you motivated in this industry? Oh, man, I just love, I love, I love that feeling of being on stage, man. Like, it's, it's like therapy. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's like your own personal space where you could go to that, don't nobody even want to come into you feel me and you mm. get to be you told you know what i mean you get to be your thoughts you get to, you know what i mean because when yeah. you off the stage you know i kind of gotta move a certain way i can't do this can't but when i'm on stage anything goes that's not offensive so yeah. well what, are, even what if have, it is offensive. what have you been learning like during because i mean what you've been in the game that long what have you learned that's a little bit different about the comedy game that that it was back in the day uh, now it's like you can like back when I started, you feel me? You had to go to get somebody to connect you to the crowd. You feel mm, me? Okay. But now you can sit in your living room and get a crowd, and then come to the agents with the crowd, and they're not going. You feel me? They're not going to turn you down. They're going to be like, man, damn, you got this many followers. Okay, cool. I fuck with you. Yeah. You're going to get some money. I know some people too. Man, and then you know, been do, they've been doing this, um, the Zoom and stuff too now because of quarantine. Man, everything, man, is they didn't, they man, they geniuses. Now, have you done, have you done any of the Zoom? Um, yeah, man, I actually okay. did. Do, I did one with uh, Michael Collier, and I actually, oh, did, yeah, I love Michael Collier. Okay, yeah, yeah, I did. I did Michael Collier's morning show, and uh, I actually, you know, I it was different than I thought. You okay. feel me? It's like. I didn't even, you know, as a comedian, you feel like until you do it, you're like, nah, man, I need that instant gratification for the jokes and right. blah, blah, blah. But if you got people on the screen and they give you that instant gratification, it's almost the same thing. You feel yeah, me? I mean, if you get the likes and then the ha ha, no, no. Only thing that I heard one of my good friends as a comedian, I ain't going to say a thing because I don't put him out there like that, but he said <laughs> he, that was the first time he ever bombed. On a on a Zoom because he was like niggas was booing in the damn it man. 
Yeah. I, see, I was I like, wait a minute. Like, see me when I was doing it, and when I did it with Mark, Michael Call, you was like. And I started it, you know, like I would start any normal set. Just, you feel me? Like mm-hmm. talking the way that I talk. He was right. like, hey, 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 you can't cuss in the uh, middle of the set. And, yeah. And I kept on with the joke and just stopped cussing or whatever. And mm-hmm. then when we got to the end of it, he was like, he was like, hey, man, that, that's not easy. People usually can't do that. Like right in the middle of the joke. And you, I, like, I've heard you say the joke. So I know right. the joke has a lot of cussing in it. And right. you, when I said no cussing, you stopped cussing. I mean, like, yeah, you just gotta use different words. synonyms, yeah. and I'm, you know. <laughs> I'm more than a nigga just on stage talking. Hey, that's what I'm talking you about. Did. Well, speaking of that, mm-hmm. what was one of your most memorable moments on stage? Uh, most memorable, probably Comic View. Okay. Because I I got on Comic View on accident. I just happened to come with K Dub, and you feel me? Just like I don't even know what made me and this lady start talking to each other but we just start, i probably talked to the lady for about four hours just sitting there yeah she had a table i'm just talking to her blah 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 and she got up and walked off and then you know when she walked off she was running when she was coming back and i was like damn what happened so when she ran up to me <laughs> she was like can you go on tonight hell yeah I can right. go on tonight. And I was she was like, like okay is it a check with this yeah, yeah. She, was like, she was like she was like okay all right do you have your id i was like yeah she was like social security card i was like nah she was like okay we can get past that. Mm-hmm. Give me your ID. Boom. She went, took my shit, brought it back, gave me the credentials. Like, and I'm still like, it's not this easy. Like, I'm, not getting, I'm not getting on calm. I'm not going to be on calm with you this fucking easy. That's mm-hmm. how I'm thinking in my head, just sitting there trying to be calm. And then, like, I didn't believe I, I, I'm thinking whoever didn't come, they fucked when, up. Before they say my name, <laughs> right. they're going to come running in like Eddie oh. Kane. <laughs> I'm like, but if he did that, you gonna call me? I took your money. I'm, I'm, I'm just waiting on everybody right. to say, "Hold on, girl, he he he, he made it. Hold on." Right. You feel me? It never happened. So, and then I got the worst intro. Like that's why I don't really care when young comics be like, yeah. "Man, my intro was better." Man, I got the worst intro. In well, what did they say? Country. Cheryl Underwood said, "Like I watched it so many times, I still remember it." Oh Bader. God. <laughs> She said, you know, every time Comic View comes in town, comics come from all over the country just to hang out in the lobby. And they're hoping to get on the show. Well, tonight, we give him one of those lobby comics a shot. And his ass better be funny. Okay. Hell from Trent, New Jersey, by way of Atlanta. Mm. Your boy. <laughs> when I tell y'all went up there and monkey stomped that Listen, thing. Listen, that's, that's the motivation you need to I'm get up there and rip it. Monkey stomp. I'm talking about the laughter was so loud mm. and consistent that I felt it and I couldn't even talk. I just could I just had to laugh. I could I, I wouldn't they would have heard nothing I said over the laughter that was going on. Mm. People standing up, running down the aisle, holding their hands up, grabbing each other, falling. It was, it was the best <laughs> moment of my life. So did you um give her the mic and say take that? When you got off the stage, no, no, actually, because back then they she kept you on stage, okay, and she talked to you a little bit to the crowd or whatever. And she was like, You got kids? I was like, Yeah, she was like, how many? Two, and then she, they put the little crickets or whatever. Mm-hmm. And you know, then good job, girl. There, I know that's she right, playing like a play. Please. Now, we still talking about this stage for a little bit. Now, have you ever had a bad set? And if so, how did you handle it? Um, uh. As a comedian, you're going you're not just gonna have one bad set because yeah. you feel me, sometimes you feel me, the material just don't match the vibe. That's why you gotta try to be universal. And I learned those type of things early, early on in my career. Like my worst, the worst set that I've ever had that always pops into my head instantly is the first time I ever went to New York. Okay. And it was like you feel me? It was like, <laughs> you feel me? it was what I needed because I'm, I'm in Atlanta smashing. You feel yeah. me? I'm in Atlanta killing these mugs. Well, so where do you think that you went wrong? Was it just the. When I got when I got on stage and I was trying to be the most country I could think of. Why would I you went do that stage. in New York? Listen to me. I'm 20. I'm 20. <laughs> fucking, I'm 23. Okay. Yeah, I'm 23. So right. nigga, I'm in Atlanta smashing. I'm right, the man. Right. Nigga. This works in Atlanta. What yeah. I'm about to do. Okay. You feel me? So when I get on stage, goddamn, you know what I'm talking about? This boy there, there, you see him. They're like, no. Bro, sir. them folks was looking at me. I heard, dog, it was so quiet in there. I heard somebody say, I didn't know they was going to have retarded motherfuckers in there. Nigga, no. I, listen, <laughs> dog, listen, I heard them say this shit. I was oh, like, God. what the 
and right, it was it was a comedian Rashid in New York. I'm talking about. I'm not even bullshit. I'm my eyes. I think I heard the nigga say, "I ain't know they was gonna have retarded niggas." In there. Oh my god! So after the show, Rashid, rest in peace. He was a comedian from New York. I remember. Probably, yeah, good motherfucker, man. He got down, walked up to me with the little fifty bucks. He was like, "Hey, yo, son, 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 like you put too much on it." Mm. It's like no matter what you would have said, we would have knew you was from the south. You didn't have to do all that. Oh, so, yeah. like, Especially if you already had the. I'm, I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm from Atlanta, <laughs> right? <laughs> so no matter what I say, they go back. Oh, he from, he from the south. But I went up that bitch like a hill. Oh, what we gonna do? Like this right here. They was, oh, hold on, hold on, nigga. Wait. They was like, nah, we don't, we don't like, want nah, that. Nah, we don't want the retired. <laughs> God, from down south. Bring the normal. Oh, I don't. And you, and how you, like, you had that, I, that had to be crushing. Like, what made you just say, okay, fuck, I'm gonna try again? Because he, like, I believe in me. Mm. You feel me? So, as long as, like, I've never been in a position where I felt like it was something outside of my control that caused the set to go bad. Okay. You feel me? Like, yeah. I've never felt like that. Anytime it went bad, I'm like, oh, shit, I probably should have said that joke right there a little earlier so I could have grabbed their attention instead of mm -hmm. thanking these motherfuckers here to see me. Damn. You feel me? So it's never yeah. like, I never be like, maybe that just wasn't funny. Because, like, I've been doing it so long. It's like, even if my joke's not working, I just know how to be funny. Right, right. It tickled me, so that's all that matters. <laughs> right? Hey, listen. <laughs> I'm all that, really all you got to do is be convinced in, in how you look and what you're saying. You feel me? It's like I can't go up there with a suit on, you feel me? A suit on, well groomed, haircut, and then think that I'm going to, you feel me, convey to the crowd what I'm trying to say if I'm up there like, boy, goddamn, you feel me? So, motherfucker, you know what I'm talking about? Right. Goddamn, you know, they're going to be like, whoa, whoa, hold on. Like their we, brains gonna be like, oh, oh, oh. they be like, hold on, they our eyes aren't matching over here. Like, oh, oh, oh. You can't be in a tuxedo so talking like hear, that, right? They're not gonna hear what you're saying, so you gotta find a way to be you, and that's what they're gonna like. That's what they're gonna like more. They're gonna be like, as long as they feel like they can look at you and be like, I bet you this nigga like this on Saturday. He's yeah. on a regular old Saturday. Well, I feel like I mean any skill set is fifty percent of it is confidence. Man, fifty my ass. You need more than fifty. Shouldn't me. You need really? Shit. Hell yeah. You well, need, I think you need talent too. You need total confidence. Like no, nah, because you don't think, think it's about, 50 /50? Listen, look at the internet, nigga. Look at Melvin, nigga. <laughs> yeah, <true>. nigga. <laughs> that's true. nigga. That's total. Nigga. That's total nigga, confidence. Ice JJ Fish. He has, <laughs> he has nothing else to rely on. I, at least I JJ Fish was relatively good looking if he didn't talk. Once he started talking, you'll be like, what the fuck? But if I JJ Fish get groomed, put on a suit, and just up against the wall, and until he say something, you'll be like. I ain't going to lie. Out of all his, his hits. That's what I'm saying. My favorite one is fuck is you doing, bitch ass nigga. That's my jam right there. See, I'm going. I can't <laughs> listen to none of it, y'all. It's like, listen to, <laughs> like, try to listen to your own like, What is that? If you Google that later on today, you're I'm gonna go Google. Like, this is some dumb Say shit, it but it's it's fuck is you doing, bitch ass nigga. Fuck is you doing, bitch. <laughs> that's it. I was slick by but the making confidence. I was slick by the making my ringtone. That's how and, funny. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. And he got damn. You feel me? That's confident. That confidence is what people was messing with. Even though every song they listen to it is, they laughing at it. They not Absolutely. listening to it for no type of real entertainment man it was they just like listen to this nigga. <laughs> you like, that's all you listen to him for. but you ain't lying about the confidence because he be like no that nigga he be looking so cold. serious my nigga. <laughs> nigga might reach into the camera nigga <laughs> pull you in no, God damn oh, God. sound like hell all right now what is something valuable you learned through the quarantine time something valuable that i learned through the quarantine time is that it's okay to talk to yourself and tell yourself what it is you desire and okay. then just you know what i mean because like sometimes you just get so caught up in people's image of you and you never take time to say Nigga, what, what, what do you want to accomplish and you actually got a chance during quarantine to say god damn it, you know what listen i want to go back to school okay. and you got them went back to school for a year got your associate real quick mm -hmm. you know what i'm doing yeah. But I didn't do that. But it just made you know I'm I'm already one of those information dudes. So yeah, 
I was able to gather a shitload of information. I, yeah, I can tell. I can. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. But all my information is about bettering black people. That's what mm-hmm. people not understand. I'm not trying to fight, but it's like. Well, you know, I think a lot of times people take your passion as uh, like frustration. No, and they, and they only take it like that because it makes them uncomfortable. It's like if they sat and talked to me, they would hear my tone is like they looking at what I'm saying, and because of the way it's making them feel, they thinking I'm saying, "Yeah, these bitch, these motherfucking hoes, <laughs> I'm on their ass tonight." <laughs> well, see, this is the difference. It depends on how what household you're coming from, because I know, like, I have a good friend of mine. She's very, you would never know that she's that sensitive unless you know her, mm-hmm. but you might just be talking to her in a, like a strong voice and she want to cry. And I'm like, right. yeah, Nigga, so that right. makes you like, you can, I, I don't know how you exist in America. Well, that's what that's I'm saying. True. Some people are so sensitive when yeah. you talk in a, in a, I guess they call it aggressive manner. Like I'm not mad. This no, is just how is, I talk. It's, it's, it's because, it's <laughs> right. because everything has been hypersensitive. Yeah. You've, well, hypersensitive, fuck, you know the word I'm trying to say, more mm-hmm. hype, you know. And it's because you know it's because of you know the 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 voices that are that are allowed to be heard. You feel me? And like, yeah. I don't have nothing against nobody, but it's like the ones who can come against you and create the most devastation for you getting money are sensitive people, are emotional mm-hmm. people. So it's like it's not a shock to me, but it's like I'm just one of those people that's like you know. You can't be mad because I'm calling it what it is. Like I can see if I'm just making up stuff and saying right. that it's something that it's not. Like I'm just calling it what it is. And, you know, it makes people uncomfortable, but you know. Nothing. I mean, just because you don't like my opinion, don't mean <laughs> you gotta even, be mad at me. I don't even like. I don't. I'm not even trying to use opinions. Like, okay. you feel me? I don't even be using opinions. Like, if I'm saying something wrong, it should be men saying that I'm saying something wrong. It's just mm. these niggas is not bold and bold like me. Just like I can get out and go against religion and actually do a conscious research effort to figure out the validity of this text. You know what I mean? Like I'm one of those dudes. And, you know, like some people don't know how to handle that because they'd rather just live in that space of comfort. And so do you think people are want to call you the next Kevin Samuels? <laughs> uh, I'm saying I, I don't really want to be a Kevin Samuels. It's, what I do want is our people to like... I feel like the only way that it'll get some get some real momentum is if it seems like at every corner you're hearing a nigga saying the same thing. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And like if I'm if I ain't number number two, okay. It's like I'm just one of those dudes. It's like I'm open to anything that's gonna better us as a group. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and that's whoever's saying it. Like, I hear a lot of different topics and stuff. And it's like only the things that I feel like are real issues are the things that I talk about. And, you know, I don't, I don't want to smoke. You know what I mean? I don't be wanting no beef. And man, I be getting people call me everything. Gay, okay? hate listen. women. Like, <laughs> I love women. Your timeline be having me crack up. I'll be like, oh, they real mad. They yeah, big mad at me. Big <laughs> man. Ooh, all you gotta do is keep scrolling. Exactly. Like, That's what be making me mad sometimes. Be the post same something. eight people who feel like, yes, I'm be- I'm the same as a man. But let me let me let's. I'm I'm really bad. Like when I post something, somebody don't like it, and they want to go back and forth. I'm like, mm, block, delete, next, yes, and I just keep it moving. Mm, I find entertainment. But now, like, do you do you mm. actually just like to go off on that? <laughs> I don't be liking to go off, but I just feel like because what I do, what I am learning is that after I post all this stuff, people go back and read it. This is true. This is true. And I get calls because, see, like, at the end of the day, I don't ever want you to not know my stance. Mm -hmm. Like, my stance is never to make the woman look bad, make her look I'm just calling the spade a spade. It's like, okay, y'all kicked us out the house. Mm -hmm. Y'all had full control. Y'all y'all have had control since 67. Okay. Look what's being produced. We're at the bottom economically, fucking educational, fucking Boys reading on the fourth grade level. Mm-hmm. Come on. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's all like, because like I say, man, it's like nobody else do that. Nobody else leave. And every group is going through the same thing. Every group men is cheating. Every group men is uh, drinking and coming home loud. And every group is dealing with the same issues. Black women is the only ones who leave. And they don't realize that that leaving is damaging the child. It's like stay with the nigga and just talk shit. But y'all I mean, still I mean, talk I, shit in the room, go off, beat him up, jump on him, and all that shit. But y'all goal should be 
to make sure that these kids have a productive perspective before getting into this world. Well, I feel both sides of the fence, to be honest with you, because it's like, I get what you're saying, like you don't want to break up the home. Right. But at the same time, it's like, do you want to take away your peace and be in drama just to save something? It's, it's not, it's, it's, that's what I'm saying. You got to take you out of it. Like, you got to take you How out you of it. How you take you out of it if it's you in a relationship? I know, but I'm just saying, you got to take you out of it. It's only about the kids. Well, okay. That, that's see, I can't speak on about. that. That's what I'm saying. It's all, yeah. Like, if you don't, if y'all don't have kids together, then yeah. by all means, you don't deal yeah. with nothing. If he's yeah. not giving you what you need to fulfill his desires, by all means, you get the hell on. But if y'all got kids, if y'all decide to have, like, if you decide to have the baby, mm -hmm. you feel me? You shouldn't leave him. And shit, eighty percent of the time, the woman leave. I don't feel like you should leave him at well, all. I mean, see, unless he beating you up, like that's what I'm saying. Certain situations, you, and then I mean, like, and when I say beating you up, I mean beating you up where it's times where you swole up and you okay, lip so busted, and this. he might pick you up and goddamn slam you. I ain't talking about you leaving because the nigga mush you, right? Or because the nigga goddamn slap you when you swing on him. I ain't talking about that. You shouldn't leave for that. Y'all should okay. do that in the room. You feel me? Where the kids don't see it, and when the kids see y'all. So, question. Mm -hmm. Physical abuse is always horrible, but you don't think mental abuse is worse? I'm saying mental abuse is how can, like, I don't understand how you can be mentally abused if it's your mind. Like, it's your mind. You feel me? It it's happens. like, it happens because you allow <laughs> it to. Right. I'm saying you allow mental abuse to happen. It's like, a, you, you're letting what someone else is saying about you have an effect on you. That's retarded. That's fucking crazy. I get what you're saying because I would never. But, like, what but, if you if you saying that all about me? Why am I around? And if you are saying all that about me, why did I even have a baby with you? Because you didn't just start saying this about me. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> well, just, clearly he agreed. <laughs> Thought I had my ringer off, but yeah, apparently it didn't. Yeah, no. It's got to turn that off. <laughs> turn my hands off. <laughs> All right, well, we are moving on. Yeah. So we're going to get into some of the fun a little bit. Mm -hmm. Name the dumb and, dumbest reason you've ever quit a, quit a job. Man, I didn't quit jobs for a very dumb reason. <laughs> dog. I didn't quit jobs because, shit, I was the only cook at lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> like not a burger is gonna be flipped today. No, and then y'all fired the nigga for something stupid. He was only late for twenty. He was only twenty five minutes late. And y'all fired him. No one got him well. Wednesday hump day be cracking in this month. Y'all gonna fire him Tuesday. And think, man, listen, hey, y'all better call the GL. Y'all about to be cooking today. <laughs> the manager of the GM on the grill. Did they, you just walk out, or you hey, gave us two weeks or what? Uh, once it got pumping. Mm -hmm. And they start screaming at me alone, realizing <laughs> that I'm doing a job that two men usually have to do. Uh -huh. And they screaming at me like I'm moving slow. Mm -hmm. go, oh, you think I'm slow? <laughs> yeah, let me, let me show you exactly how slow this can get. <laughs> I'm out. You ain't about to keep screaming at me. Hey, oh, stop dear. screaming at me, man. Stop screaming. You grabbed me that time, Jeff. So, wait, <laughs> Jeff, you grabbed me that time. So you just threw the shit down. Like, all right, hey, man, I'm out. Jeff, Jeff, don't <laughs> fuck me. <laughs> Walked out. <laughs> hey. Okay, well, hell. I and then I quit because gay dude smacked me on the ass. Mm -hmm. I knew That's too different. many cameras. Yeah, because like, you, you were the punch him, right? I would hit him. Plop. I mean, that could have been a payday. You could have been a sexual harassment all day. Yeah, hey, I know, but I ain't think about that. I was like 15. This was before oh, yeah. cool. Like, yeah. he was one of the ones that. They was trying to turn you. Right. Yeah, he was like RuPaul. You know Feel what? me? Like, no, for real. RuPaul, <laughs> I salute RuPaul. RuPaul right. was doing it when it wasn't cool. Mm. When you could tell jokes about it, right, and call his call his name out, <laughs> you, feel, you can't do that now. You, as soon as I start gay jokes, I hear the crowd. Mm. Where's he going? <laughs> Where's he going? Now that is, you know what that is a hard thing to do to try to tell a gay joke without being offensive. It's it's really not hard. It's just because the only the only thing you really got to do because like it's actually true. Like all you got to do is yeah. empower them. It's like true, you feel true. Me? That's true. Whatever you say about them, as long as at some point you empower them. As long as you give them a hero cookie at the yeah, end, that's all they they're want. good to go. You feel me? Yeah. You can say all the <laughs> shit that the gay dude did, and what bad. you can do all that. As long as you say, but he'll whoop your ass. You that's feel true. me? They like that's, okay, cool. yeah. Long as this nigga long as you shit know, no right? Ass. That bitch got hands. <laughs> yes. That's the pop, nigga. No. Yes. 
Yes, get it, bitch. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. What's one talent you have that others don't know about yet? Oh, talent that I have that others don't. I got a few talents, man. Like I, I whistle well. Uh, can you do the one with the fingers too? Yeah, I can. I can't do that. I, can't do I ain't want to do it here too now. Yeah. I, I can do all the flip my eyeballs, roll my tongue. Not true. You know what? That tongue might work, but <laughs> all right, moving on. You know what? I can't. <laughs> it's like it's stupid. All right, who is your favorite rapper and singer, and why? Favorite rapper and singer. Like a rapper that sings, or no, just like a rapper one, one and of singer. your rappers, one of your fingers. Uh, favorite rapper, probably DMX. Mm. Uh, favorite singer, favorite singer who can always get some chills out of me. Mm. Oh, I'm I, I ain't I ain't want to, I want to try to find somebody else, but mm -hmm. yeah, that got them behind. Really? Yeah, to be okay. High, give me something. She give me some every time. Every time I, she always. I don't know who writing for her or who. So what's it. one that one song that make you be like, okay? Cater to you. Mm. Cater okay. To you. Yeah. I love uh, Kelly's verse though. Mm. Yeah, Kelly's mm. verses. Yeah, that's one. I'm surprised. You, I mean, Beyonce is cool. I'm surprised you didn't say something like, about it different. You but, what you was thinking? What you was thinking? Because when, when I think of like soulful singer, not saying that she ain't got no soul, but mm -hmm. nigga Jasmine Sullivan. Jasmine Sullivan, nigga. dope, dope. But it's like I like <laughs> so much different type of stuff. Though. Yeah. So you know, what I mean, like you might hear me listening to shit. F U N, fun. You might hear me listening to fun. Yeah. Tonight. Oh, see, I know the song. I just yeah. don't know the people. We are young. You know what I mean? Oh, you know what song I like that um shit, I can't think of it. Uh Gautier. Um now you're just somebody that I used to know. Yo, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's All right. What's one of your favorite versus battle that you've seen thus far? And what's one that hasn't happened yet that you want to see? Versus battle that I've seen. I rocked with the Gucci and Jeezy versus battle. Oh, that shit was funny. <laughs> it was classic. Which one would I want to see? Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing uh, eight ball and MJG and Goody Mob. Mm, that would be dope. Go, go what would they now? You know, Goody Mob is my people, but I'm wondering what they would. What would they battle with? Arm robbery? Cause that was my shit, bro. Like what um, song would go with um, Arm Robbery versus Goody Mob? What? what song would you think Goody Mob would drop with that? What? Nigga. Hold on. I'm quite single, but occasionally I mingle. But aside from, from all, all the red, she sparks my interest. interest. Okay. okay. No, ma'am, I don't know you. <laughs> Just offer in the common respect. I feel I know you. Also, some conversation, companionship, common grounds, and common sense. What? You that know, album, that whole album. First of all, let me tell you something. That's that, the standard album. That, that's my one of my favorite albums. What? But what is it? The nigga experience. That's the first time I ever memorized oh, any man. shit come ever. On, <laughs> come on, man. I was like, look, I got it. It'll be on. it'll be a good. I, I'm trying to think what a ball, a ball and MJG. I might have put well now for the South. Yeah, that'd be a good, that'd be a good run. Cause I mean, I like a ball and MJG, but I only know, I ain't gonna lie. I'm, Probably know maybe like four of their songs. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But <laughs> so, it's like you, it's some of them songs that you'll hear and be like, oh! Yeah, could you be forgetting oh, that you yeah, know or yeah. Exactly. That's all it is. All right. What are some words of wisdom you would give any upcoming entertainer or entrepreneur? Yeah. Up to, upcoming entertainer or entrepreneur? Uh, man, love it because it, it, that's what's going to, that's what's going to, you feel me? That's what's going to transfer to the people. I mean, because when you love something, you put a different level of energy into it. You know what I mean? And people can tell when it's not totally about them. Like, we all know it's about the money, but right. you, feel me? Like, you want people to know that you love doing whatever it is that you're doing, not just for money. Like, you don't want to be the nigga popping up with the shit in your trunk. <laughs> Always be at a pop-up shop or some shit where it look relatively professional. Right. You know what I mean? Cause, like, because you pull it out your trunk. Whatever you tell me the price is, I'm trying to give you less. Because you just pulled it out your fucking I mean, trunk. I mean, Master P did it, though. I feel you. Master P did it in the 80s. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, but see, also, Master P was a different type of animal. Master yeah. P was flying 
to each place himself mm -hmm. on his own dollar, taking them his t CDs That's every true. week. Yeah. Like, come on. That's a different type of animal. They don't make those. Yeah, they don't make two of those. And doing your own promotion. And doing your own publicity. Stop. Stop. People are a different animal. Like, they don't make two of them. Yeah, I don't I'm know. Like, I ain't far from my. I'm. I've been hustling my ass off. I ain't got my my yeah. money level to his hustle That's standards. What I'm saying. Well, my hustle standards are the same. Yeah, nigga, <laughs> but shit, you got to realize with no resources though. That's true. Like, That's true. At the end of the day, you can put a lot of load on here if you want to. Mm -hmm. You can take a whole lot of load and put it on here and pay this to get it out there. That nigga had to box this Joe. shit up. Right. He had to box this shit up, <laughs> put it in the truck, drive it to the airport, yeah. put it through the thing, nigga. <laughs> Get there and hey, see that award I'm here, be able to think this right, job, bro. Look, that, that's I'm your best and, and, and be able to do the paperwork and invoicing. Right. Hey, this people's an animal. Well, speaking of that, name one entrepreneur you admire and why. An entrepreneur I admire. I really, I really, really like. I, I can't separate entrepreneurship into. Cause it's like to have the nuts to be an entrepreneur is, you feel me, is commendable in itself. You know what I mean? To to feel like your drive and your desire is strong enough to make it without on your own. Like that's mm. different. You feel me? Like you, I can't. Anybody who decides to be an entrepreneur, I respect every single one of them. Cause it's so easy to just go and get forty two thousand a year for the rest of your life and. Yeah. You feel me? Live like that, even though that's relatively comfortable, but you know, depending on your expenses. Yeah, right, you know exactly. I mean? But your expenses be dumb shit, shit that you don't need, because water, food, and shelter don't cost more than about fifty thousand dollars a year. Comfortably. When did you know that working for? Not saying that you haven't come. I mean, everybody's worked for somebody, but when did you know that working for someone was just not for you? Oh, I, I knew that. Uh, one shit when when I used to always shit work for people long enough to get a quarter pound of weed and then start selling weed and quit the goddamn job. <laughs> Look, I just need enough for the real. Okay, That's all I, <laughs> hey, I smoked out with the chicks. I got hey, I'm work with y'all about three weeks because you know you got to put a week in the hole. Right. And you get to do week check, and then you don't do shit, and then you still get one more check Listen. from the week in the hole. So you got two checks. I think I knew when I quit a job because I couldn't find a parking spot. I was like, bro, I'm not I, Once I did Comic View, I knew that there was no job that I wouldn't quit for a hundred dollar show. Mm. You feel me? It's like a hundred dollars. Yeah, because niggas work all day for that hundred dollars and you can get on the stage for five minutes and still make that money. Yeah, exactly. That's Dang. what I be telling. Like that's what I, I was telling the chick that I was I was working with her. And I was like, if you think that I'm like, if you don't think I'm doing you a favor, you crazy. I'm working mm. for you six hours a day to get a check for six hundred dollars at the end of the week mm -hmm. when i can go and do 35 minutes mm -hmm. and get that same 600 and chill for the rest of the week hey, for the rest of the week that part come on man stop it i'm doing you a favor trust me <sighs> we're moving on to the fun part let's get it we are going to Kiss or diss? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna name some celebrity crushes. Mm -hmm. You're gonna decide who you kissing, who you dissing. Okay. Brandy or Jasmine Sullivan? Who you kissing, who you dissing? Mm. I'm kissing Brandy. Okay. Yeah, I like her. I always like Brandy's personality. Yeah, because she and Aquarius like me. That's what we do. Yeah, that, <laughs> I do have those mag. Yeah, that that, that peaceable. You feel me? Agreeable mm -hmm. type of energy. Whether she is or not, but that's the energy she always gives off. So. All right, we got Monica or Beyonce. Mm, yeah, Beyonce. All right. Roseanne Barr or Tracy Chapman. What? Uh oh, I'm kissing Tracy. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> All right. Well, we are moving on to our DAQs, this stands for dumbass questions or just random fun questions I want answers to. If your life had a theme song, what would it be? Oh, that's a good question. If my life had a theme song, it'd be uh, number 12 on DMX's uh, it's hell, it's dark and hell is hot. 
<laughs> number 12, like I knew what number 12 was. Okay, because I can't think of the name of the song, but it started out. Who is this I see coming through? It's like three on the AM. I'm going to rob this nigga. When I'm done, I'm going to slay him. Being stupid like coming through after one or two and having a gun that he couldn't get to. Yeah, that's what I do. Foolish niggas learn the hard way. And I teach him in the wrong place at the wrong time. And I reach him. Yeah. Okay, it's kind of good little DMX. I, I heard a little. Are you thinking the little ground? Okay. <laughs> if you could roundhouse kick anyone in your past that you know personally with no consequences, who would it be? Um, that I could roundhouse with no. Uh, I would probably roundhouse Mr. Lockwood. Man, he was my seventh grade teacher. Man, I remember. He used to got because he used to always like because I used to suck my thumb mm-hmm. every time I came in this class. He used to be you, you, you. Everybody around here is scared of you. You ain't nothing but a big old baby. Mm. You big old baby sucking your thumb. <laughs> you sucking your thumb. You big old baby. And I'm talking. About he said this shit to me every <laughs> single day, every day. As soon as he seen me sucking my thumb, he you big ass baby. What did it get you to stop? Yeah, well, I, hey. I, I didn't talk about something after, uh, yeah, after his class on everything. By the time I got to the eighth grade, yeah, going to the summer, yeah, I wasn't talking. I wasn't talking. About and guess what? And, and you, you have nice teeth because of that now. Facts. There you go. And I sucked <laughs> my thumb from like birth to about thirteen. Nigga, you ain't the only one. Look, I ain't gonna never forget. My mom was telling me, you know, you I just spent it over your friend's parents' house, like when they had to come. My mom's five ten. Right. And so she was like, all right, now look, you too old to be sucking your thumb. I think I was like nine or ten or whatever. She was like, don't go over there and embarrass me. Suck your damn thumb. And I'm like, all right, whatever. So we get over to my aunt's house. And she's cooking dinner. She got a thumb in her mouth and stirring in the chili in one hand. I said, oh, shit. Thumb time. It's thumb time. I was like, I can't wait till my mom. Mother, you telling me that to suck my thumb? Diane was cooking chili and sucking her thumb. She said, just got the, no. that bitch 50 years old no. sucking her thumb. I had, I had a, uh, my uncle, my uncle used to hate that I sucked my thumb. I'm talking about that. And every time he seen when I was like five, six years old, five, six years old, mm-hmm. the nigga did everything but stick my thumb in his ass. <laughs> he did everything I'm talking about. <laughs> That nigga put hot sauce, <laughs> hot sauce oh nail God. polish, goddamn. I bet you be stuck in nail finger in your hand. You know, but, oh, if you did that, <laughs> dude, that, my family would have shot that nigga, dog. <laughs> oh, my God. But, dog, my family would have shot that nigga. They would have caught my thumb in his hand. <laughs> I know my mama would have fucked him up. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> I'm talking about, he did everything. I'm talking about sprinkled shit on it. Mm-hmm. And then this the crazy part. He did all that shit to me. And then every one of his kids came out sucking it down. Wow. Every hey. one of them, nigga. I'm telling you, he had four of them. Look, the hot every sauce shit didn't work for me either because I like hot sauce. I've been eating hot sauce yeah. too. So yeah. that was like, I'm shit, put some on him up. Like, I don't know why. Yeah, I'm six years old. Like, I don't know why I keep doing it. I'm just going to go wash my hands. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like, you think I'm just going to sit by you? No. I'm going to wait till you doing something. To sneak off. And wash That's my it. Fucking thumb off. You're going to be like, Des, are you sucking on that? Yep. Yeah, it's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> so what is one embarrassing moment you're willing to share that you will never forget about your childhood? An embarrassing moment. Oh man, I shit it on myself. Nigga, this is the going thing for comedian, baby. Right, I shit it on myself, <laughs> dog. I was in the fifth grade, bro. Right? Mm-hmm. I remember, nigga. I like and I was just telling somebody about this. Oh god. I had to shit leaving school and mm-hmm. we was walkers. Because we didn't live that yep, far. Walkers and riders. That's we right. Walkers, nigga. <laughs> and I goddamn was walking up the motherfucking hill. And when I was walking up the hill, I guess the incline <laughs> made my body do something different <laughs> where I felt like the shit went away. Mm. So I was like, oh, well, I can make man, it. I'm about, yeah, I'm about to go to fast stop. Mm-hmm. Get me a lollipop. You was gonna, gonna add to the bubble guts? That's what I'm. No, I, I wasn't gonna eat it yet. Okay. I, okay. I, listen, this is not this is not bubble guts. This okay. is prepared for release. This is not <laughs> and no guts. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is prairie dog. Okay. We are prairie dog at this point. So, but the prairie went back up, right? Mm-hmm. So, boom, I go to the fast stop, get the lollipop. Boom, pay for the lollipop. As soon as I walk out the store, wham! I feel the hit. I'm like, oh <laughs> shit. 
So automatically you start walking slow. Mm-hmm. You feel me? You gotta start walking slow. You oh, come on, baby Jesus. <laughs> oh, Allah, goddamn Buddha, please. You didn't call every every oh, you guy. Know, every you got all the guys looking at you like who calling us? <laughs> got oh, to these God. bushes, man. That thing dropped. Mm-mm-mm. That thing dropped. I'm talking about full breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about this oh, all yeah. now, baby. Like, oh man! I walked to the crib. You feel me, like a like a two year old in the bedroom. Where are you walking like, all? Like- oh, <laughs> get to the crib, take the drawers, put them in the garbage in the bathroom, in the tub, <laughs> nigga. Oh, I, I'm in the video. I'm in the living room playing the video game. Oh, when my mom come in, mm-hmm. and goddamn, when she walk, I look at it. Hey, mm-hmm. playing the video game, nigga. She, what the? F- what the fuck is who the how she find it? You because I put him in the garbage in the you, bathroom. But wait a minute, you didn't ball up. L- listen, I took him off and put him in the garbage. But you supposed to tie them. Wasn't no tie. <laughs> Wasn't no tie. I just draws <laughs> in the garbage. <laughs> oh my, my god. Mom seen them draws, man. That was bro. it. No, listen, it's a good thing we was on the third floor. Cause oh. she would have threw me out the window. I know it. Wait Cause I, her voice was different. I had never heard her sound like that. She, what the this fuck? <laughs> Who the? Well, she the end roll. Most embarrassing. Oh, well, it's funny that you said shit and out the window. I got an older brother, <laughs> and, when, <laughs> and so my older brother and my cousin used to live with us when we were younger. And my mom used to always, um, you know, buy them the same clothes, so she had to, you know. Right. Get different stuff. So <laughs> she kept no every time she washed her clothes, they'd be short on underwear. And she was like, What the fuck is happening with these niggas' underwear? I swear I'll buy a pack a day. But she also yeah. told them, <laughs> I don't want to see no sh- um stri- yeah. streets in your <laughs> drawers. So like, I got throw these <laughs> if I, y'all need look, if y'all got skin marks in y'all drawers, you ain't cleaning your ass enough. You need to wipe till you don't see nothing no more, right? So she trying to explain to them why she don't want to shit in the drawers. Work. Don't work. So every time she's looking for like doing laundry, what herself, where the fuck are they drawers at? Come to find out, these ignorant niggas was taking a shitty drawers and throwing them in the neighbor's yard, backyard. Because <laughs> they're trying to get rid of the evidence. Yeah, because you gotta t- <laughs> like it, it don't it, you you don't get it's a certain age that you get to where you learn about the thumb. You feel me? It's a thumb the part thumb. of that wipe. Yeah, it's a thumb part of that wipe that you don't learn about as a little boy. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a thumb okay. part of that wipe that you don't learn about as a little boy. So you just smearing it all over. <laughs> you just <laughs> smearing it from tank to the goddamn top of your head. <laughs> Can, you, just, <laughs> Can you imagine? Just think, this think you go outside your house and you just do a yard work and you see all these little yeah. bitty draws with shit on them. What the fuck? What the hell is this? Hey, come on. <laughs> come on, Tony. Come down here, man. Oh, hey. As soon as you said, as soon as you got, as soon as you pointed a pair of drawers, they're gonna look at each other. Oh what man. is them? I don't, I don't know what them is. <laughs> everybody get a whooping. You ain't lying. Whoop everybody. Now, what is the worst name you could give a free clinic? The worst name I could give a free clinic. Uh, humps and bumps. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we deal with: humps and bumps. <laughs> we deal with the humpers until they get the bumps. Okay. Name three items you would purchase to make a cashier feel uncomfortable. Uh, condom, KY jelly, and a spin wheel. A spin wheel. Exactly. What? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we are moving on where this is going. <laughs> to offer that thing out. So you have to sing one of the songs that you know at least one full verse to in your best opera voice. Okay, one full verse in my best opera voice. Hold on, one song. I know. First. Leaning by the water, per pill popper, pull up at follies on pill pill pills. I'm on that perp, I'm on that lean. <laughs> Ill, Ill, Ill. 
And that is the operatic stylings of Mr. Daryl Day. That's all I got, baby. <laughs> on to what grinds your gangster? Name one of your pet peeves. Oh, uh, one of my pet peeves. Uh, I don't like people talking too close to me. <laughs> I don't like getting spit on, man. I, I always get spit on when people be too close talking. Mm-hmm. And you feel me? It's bad when you like because I spit on people too. You mm-hmm. feel me? I don't want. It. But and then when you see the spit come out and it hit you, you just you, you keep your face straight. Like, when it hit you on your me. lip, you want to scream. It got me, man. I done been sprayed. I'm been sprayed. I done had a nigga get boy, what the hell you been? Slam everything. You just ah shit, boy. Goddamn, chill. <laughs> you did that on purpose, man. You fucking... What the way that nigga got me, cause <laughs> <laughs> nigga, nigga drunk. Come on, boy, what the hell you been? Please, just, just know. Damn. What the fuck wrong with you? Right, well, we are moving on to last but not least, which is our game Singadoo. Now, Singadoo is a family fun game that you can play with anybody. It's a family fun music game where you have to sing the melody of the song, but you can only use the word do. We have different genres. We have hip hop and R&B, greatest hits, Pop billboard hits, country rock, sing do favorites, old school TV themes, and party dance hits. So I'm gonna do a couple, and then you're gonna guess, and then I'm gonna let you do a couple. You got 60 seconds to guess as many songs as you think you can get. And hopefully I do my dues right. Let's see. Let's get in here. What you wanna do? Um, what category? Uh, music. Yeah, is this some music? Well, all of it's music. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hold on. You said what you want to do hip hop and R&B, greatest hits, pop billboard hits, country. Well, I can't do greatest country hits, greatest, okay. greatest hits, greatest hits, greatest hits. Yeah. And you're only using doo doos. Yes. Okay. All right, let me get the timer to go to the bottom. All right, you ready? I was born ready. Do 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 do. You got it? Friends not me. Is it friends not me? Uh-uh. Sing it out loud so you get the words. If you want to be my lover. What's the name of the song? If you want to be my lover. Okay, want to be. But by who? Spice Girl. There you go. All right. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do
That's not like, boy, you know I got a crush on you. No. Nigga, that sound like, I know you see me in the video. True, that's what that sound like. Do 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 yeah, we both got one. And that is how you play Singer Do. If you're hey, interested fun, in man. the game, you play um, get it at singerdo.com. And last but not least, please tell them how to find you. And if you got any merch, you can sell them. Let them know about that, too. Oh, I ain't got no merch right now. But, you know, it is what it is, man. Follow me on everything. Daryl Dam on everything. Daryl Dam one on Instagram because they took me shit. Remember, I told y'all. But we ain't going to worry about the hate. And we will see you next time. Make sure you tune in every Monday, Thursday, and every other Friday at Candy Kisses TV, YouTube, Facebook, iHeartRadio, Spotify, everything streaming. And we'll see you next time. Candy Kisses TV is sponsored by Singadoo. Did you do it today? Singadoo. Singadoo. Can you do it? Can you do it? Can you do it? Can you do it like this? Can you do it real quick? with some class but make it real fast this time is kind of tricky can you do it in six let's go get your copy today at singadoo.com candid kisses tv is brought to you by kissable lips cosmetics you can be kissed without kissable lips shop kissable lips cosmetics.com today for all your beauty needs Guess what? Candid Kisses TV has merch. That's right. You can find it at artistperiod.com. We have everything you need. We have hoodies. We have coffee mugs. We even have throw pillows and beach towels for the summer. <laughs> get it right. Keep it tight. Listen, everything you need to get your drip right, artistperiod.com has it for you. That's A-R-T-I-S-T-P-E-R-I-O-D.com. Get your drip right with artistperiod.com and Candid Kisses TV. Make sure you get it today.